as a part of the Jefferson County Historical Commission Video Symposium for 2022, we're pleased to present this video entitled, Morrison Golden Fossil Areas National Natural Landmark, which features overviews of two Jefferson County sites, Dinosaur Ridge and Tricistertops Trail. These two sites matter because of their scientific and historical significance, and they're described by two people who matter, Aaron LeCount, who's Dinosaur Ridge's longest serving staff member, and paleontologist, Dr. Martin Lockley, who's known for his research on dinosaur tracks, like the ones you see in this video. Aaron and Martin discuss the Cretaceous and Jurassic Age dinosaur tracks and fossils found in these locations and why they are important to scientists, as well as anyone who appreciates the ability to see for themselves the fossil record of these prehistoric giants preserved here in sandstone. My name is Erin LeCount and I'm the Education Programs Director here at Dinosaur Ridge. In 1973, Dinosaur Ridge was designated as a National Natural Landmark. And in 2011, Triceratops Trail, our secondary site, was designated part of that landmark through the Morrison and Golden Fossil Areas National Natural Landmark. This dedicates both areas as really important fossil sites, important for our historical heritage, and a really important site to be protected under national park guidelines. My name is uh, Martin Lockley. I'm a paleontologist uh, affiliated with Dinosaur Ridge and the University of Colorado, Denver. I've been involved with Dinosaur Ridge uh, since the organization was founded back in the 1980s, and we are here at one of the most iconic locations, uh, what we would call the main track site, which in fact has been um, voted uh, or designated the number one dinosaur track site in the, in the USA. There are something like a quarter of a million people who come here to see these tracks uh, every year. So let me tell you just a little bit about why they're so important and so significant. These tracks are associated with the Cretaceous time period from about uh, 100 million years ago. And there are two common track types here. The more chunky, larger ones uh, were made by a kind of duckbill dinosaur, something like Iguanodon, which is one of the best known dinosaurs and one of the first dinosaurs ever discovered in Cretaceous rocks. And uh, it is a relative of the uh, larger duckbill dinosaurs, which uh, evolved towards the end of the Cretaceous. The other um, track, which is a more slender three-toed track, uh, it was made by a carnivorous dinosaur, a, a theropod dinosaur, and it actually has the name, the track has the name Magno Avipes, which literally means big bird track. And this tells us uh, that these track making uh, carnivorous dinosaurs were um, really uh, rather like large birds, like today's emu. This has always been one of my favorite um, track sites because it is so near uh, Denver, and it has quite a long history in that it was discovered back in the 1930s when they put the um, road through here. Uh, it compares very, very favorably with almost any other track site in um, North America or in the USA. And here's the reason. The importance of uh, uh, track sites can be measured according to a number of different criteria. 
we can very precisely measure the size of the track site, the number of tracks, how well preserved they are, how many visitors come to uh, a site like this. And so Dinosaur Ridge ranks very high on um, these uh, evaluation criteria, uh, particularly the number of people, the accessibility of the site, it's visually very spectacular and so forth. When you compare it with um, sites in other parts of the world, there are, there are larger sites, but some of them are very remote, and um, some of them have not been in, interpreted or studied in much detail. The other thing that is very interesting in this area is that this, these layers that have tracks in here, and there are several layers only quite closely spaced in the strata, can be traced south all the way to New Mexico and north halfway to Wyoming. And this has given rise to what we call the dinosaur freeway. One of the things that we learned from this site is that some of these uh, large duck-billed dinosaurs were uh, uh, apparently gregarious because um, there are at least uh, a couple of places on this big surface where you can see three or four or up to six uh, animals all going in the same direction with their trackways kind of equally spaced. Uh, and this suggests herding or gregarious uh, behavior. Um, this layer was not just a, a, a beach um, near the shore of a Cretaceous seaway, but that the, the, this uh, shoreline extended as what we would call a coastal plain, like you have all the way around the Gulf Coast of Texas and Louisiana, all the way to Florida. So this was a low-lying beachfront property, we like to say, uh, in, in the Cretaceous. And the sea would have been off to the east. And uh, the, the tracks here were on shore on the western coast of the seaway and the dinosaurs may have actually migrated large distances up and down this uh, coastal plain. One of the reasons we uh, think that is likely is that we have the same types of tracks found here, uh, a couple of miles to the north, 10 miles to the north, 10 miles to the south, 100 miles to the south. So um, this is interesting from a ecological point of view that the same dinosaur communities uh, were living up and down this extensive um, coastline uh, or coastal plain and we as I said like to call it the dinosaur freeway. Welcome to the Dinosaur Ridge bone bed a historic site as well as a paleontological site. Today, you can come and see dozens of dinosaur bones. Please don't touch. We don't want to wear them down with our fingertips. But in 1877, this is where Arthur Lakes, a professor at the Colorado School of Mines, came and discovered dozens of previously undescribed dinosaur bones. He sent them east to Othniel Charles Marsh, where they described Allosaurus, Camarasaurus, Apatosaurus, naming Apatosaurus from our bones, as well as naming Stegosaurus from our bones. We also have a small crocodile here, which is pretty cool. Edward Drinker Cope was a paleontologist that at Lakes also reached out to, and it kind of kick-started a Western bone war between the two scientists. They were already fighting a lot over dinosaurs, but this site became one of the first West where they started uncovering dinosaurs. One of the reasons that Triceratops Trail is important and ranks very high uh, in the uh, evaluation of North American track sites is that it has multiple layers of tracks. They were actually uh, excavated um, rather unintentionally by uh, clay mining operations that were extracting the clay to, for brick making and that kind of thing. And so we have um, many different levels with tracks. And when you add up the total number of tracks that are known from that area, um, 
it's quite an impressive uh, number running into hundreds of footprints. If you didn't know that Stegosaurus was our Colorado State fossil, now you do. And the cool thing is that it was fourth grade students at McElwain Elementary in Denver, April 28, 1982, that named this dinosaur as Colorado's state fossil. Here at the Morrison Natural History Museum, Dinosaur Ridge's sister museum, come and see this little guy, as well as some really cool stegosaur tracks, and some of the original 1877 bone material that named Stegosaurus.